Well, now that we finished our project completely up, we're ready to output it. Now, obviously, it's going to have to go somewhere, whether it's going to be in a broadcast station with a server for playout or whether it's going to be a Blu-ray or DVD or whether it's just going to be a file that you're handing to somebody that they can watch on their computer or their iPad or whatever it happens to be. You are going to have to flatten this file out and create something. So basically, if the screen was a little bit wider, you'd see a button here for this. But remember that little down arrow because my screen isn't quite wide enough. And I can go to export and then print to file. Once I select print to file, you see this dialog box come up. And you're going to hopefully be fairly impressed here because of the fact that if I enable conversion and select this, and then I start to go through all the presets that we have of AVCHD, of our own Canopus Lossless and HQ and HQX, DVC Pro, Uncompressed, GF, iPad, HDV, JPEG 2000, MPEG 1 and MPEG 2, P2 and all of its flavors, QuickTime, MPEG 4, you can even see we have iPod, iPhone, that type of thing, Windows Media, XD Cam, EX, and, and just to go on and on. You probably can find what it is that you're wanting to use in those presets. But if you can't, that's okay because you can come into the exporter list. And in the exporter list, what we need to do is just look for the different types that we are trying to use. Now, if this gets a little bit too long, then we can just come in here and say, you know what, I just want to look at the H.264 stuff. And sure enough, in here, we have iPad, but we also have the exporter now brand new to 6.5 for Flash. Blu-ray, so you can come in here and create a file for Blu-ray, iPod, PlayStation Portable, so you can come in and set up your own parameters and then create your own preset that you can use later on. So if I was going to be going out to a flash off of this, I would just take a look at this right here. Now, I want to show you that if I bring this up a tad bit and then go down to Advanced... I can go in and do several changes if I want to, and we can't quite see all of it just because of the fact that the screen isn't quite large enough. But I can come in and change the video format, I can change the audio format, and right now it's, you know, to the current project setting, but I can come in and change it to basically anything that I want to be able to change it to. Change the feel order, the frame rate, the whole bit, and then get ready to output it. However, if I'm just outputting in my same file size that I'm doing here, I pick the exporter, select export, and then even at this point, I just name it. I can do the basic settings right here, such as what profile I want to use, the bit rate I want to use, uh, whether it be variable or constant, you know, what my average and max bit rate is, what quality that I want to have, the format for audio and the bit rate setting for that. Plus, you know, you have extended settings. And each one of the different file exports looks basically the same way, except for, you know, the settings are a little bit different. And then I can go in on, on Flash and do metadata if I want to be able to do metadata and change that here also. And once I'm done with that and I just name it, then we'll just name it test, then I can select save and then all you have to do is sit there and just wait for it to finish. And once it's finished out, by the way, it will show up in your bin window and you can bring it down to the timeline and take a look at it if you want to or just play it in the player window. Now, we're not going to wait this whole time for that to happen. So we're just going to kind of pop out of there and just one more time go into the export, print to file. And the reason being is, is because if you don't enable conversion, what's very nice is that it's going to show you just what's available for the project settings that you're in. Notice that those presets are gone up there that were there before for like iPad and everything because of the fact it doesn't support this. But I could still go into my Blu-ray exporter and go into these and be able to work with them. So it's a very simple process of just kind of picking what you want to go out to. And what's neat about this also, like XD Cam, you'll notice that I can go to either XD Cam or XD Cam EX. Now, remember how we plugged in an XD Cam card and we automatically in the source browser saw the EX footage right there? Well, if I go to XD Cam EX and then I hit export, you can see right here that it allow me to go either to a Sony or JVC, S by S card, SDHC memory card, or I can go to a folder if I want to go to a folder anywhere on the computer and it's going to create the exact same file structure and folder structure on the hard drive as it would on the card. And you can pick things such as segment encode. Now segment encode is kind of a neat thing and you'll see this on all MPEG-based file types. 
when you go in and let's say you're working in EX, all the EX footage that you did not put a filter on or does not have some kind of change on it, it's just sitting there, it's going to just copy that instead of re-encode it. So basically you can pick a segment encode to speed it up. You can pick your mode here, whether you want SP25 or HQ35. The quality, you know, you can sit there and pick, okay, if I want to do super fine or fine, it's going to take a little bit longer, obviously. And I can pick whether I want my closed group of pictures and my audio stereo. And plus I have some metadata that I can put in here. Now, if I had the card plugged in, I could pick that card and I would be able to pick the drive letter right there. And after I've picked everything else, I just hit OK. And it would literally write in its native format back to Sony EX and write directly back to the card, just in the way that we read it directly from the card and able to edit it in its native format on. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here. But the same is true of all those formats. P2 in all of its flavors, Sony XD Cam, I can write back to all of those on their original media, as well as being able to convert it into something like Flash to be able to put out on the internet or some AVCHD file or H.264 file for Blu-ray. So you have a very large amount of codecs, a very large amount of leeway of what you want to output for. And this all comes with EDIUS. This is not add-on in any way, shape, or form. This comes with EDIUS. When you buy it in the box, this is exactly what comes with it. But that's how you output the file.